Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve implement try aka a prefix tree. So a try or a prefix tree is a special type of tree and it's used to efficiently store strings and the applications are some stuff like autocomplete and spell checker. Uh, the reason is because the prefix tree allows you to efficiently uh, filter and search based on prefixes. So let's look at the actual implementation of it. So we're gonna have a object, that's the, what we're gonna be doing this time, a try object. And our job is to fill in three functions. The first function is gonna be inserting a word into the try. The second function is gonna be searching for a word in the try to see if the word exists. And the third function is gonna be to check if there is a word that starts with a given prefix. So those are the three functions we're gonna do. And let me just go through the rest of this explanation and then I'll show you what a try actually is. So here you can see basically what we're gonna actually be doing. They're gonna be instantiating the try, right? We're gonna be inserting a word such as apple, right? Then we're gonna run search, does the word apple exist? Well, we just, uh, added it so of course we're going to return true apple exists then we're going to check does the word app exist it does not the word app does not exist and third we're going to try starts with app are there any words that start with app and the answer is yes so we return true remember apple starts with app so we return true the prefix right this is the prefix app is the prefix of apple so now let me show you the actual data structure. So let me show you what a try is. And in this problem, they told us that the limitation is that the words are gonna only have characters from lowercase a to z, right? So this is lowercase a to z. So that means we're gonna have exactly 26 characters to worry about, right? But so this is a tree, right? It's a prefix tree. It's a special kind of tree. So initially our, tr our tree is gonna be empty, right? But let's say we want to insert apple. So if we want to insert the word apple, how can we do that? Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a node for the lowercase letter A, right? Then we're going to create another node for the lowercase letter P. And we're going to basically keep doing this for every character in the word that we're inserting, right? We're going to say A, insert it. P, insert it, second P, keep doing that. And every time we're inserting a new character, we're gonna add it as a child of the previous character. So we inserted the word apple, right? We can clearly see that. One more thing we have to do to say that this is the word that we inserted is we have to mark the end of the word, right? So this is the end of the word, right? The letter E is the end of the word. So we're going to mark it such that so that this is identified as the end of the word, right? Not, the, for example, this, right? If, the, if we mark this as the end of the word, then we're basically saying we inserted the word A, P. But we know we actually did apple right full on apple this is the last character so we mark here as the last character we are marking it even though it's kind of self-explanatory because this character e does not have any children it's basically obvious that this is the end of the word but we're still marking it just to be safe so you can kind of see what we're doing here now right this is kind of the root right so really what's going to be possible is we have 26 characters right so potentially we could have a a a node at the first layer for every character right so a b c d etc right we could have a node for each of these basically indicating that here is where we're going to put all of the words that start with a b here we're going to put all the words that start with a c here's where we're going to put all the words starting with d so the next thing we're going to do is run search we're searching for the word apple so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to start here at our root, right? This is technically our root, even though it doesn't really have a character, right? So that's basically just a placeholder node, right? It doesn't have any characters, it's, it's, but it's considered the root, right? And so we're going to check, does this root have the child the, of the first character that we're looking for, right? So take a look. This is the word we're looking for. Obviously, we're looking for the character A. So we check, 
hey, there's the A, lowercase a, right? It's the first character of the word. That's what we're looking for. Great. Now, for this A, we're looking for the next character, right? So does this A have a child P character? It has exactly that. So we do have this P, right? And this is what we're doing, right? We're going character by character in the word we're searching for and checking if a node exists for each character consecutively, right, as a child. So next character, P, does this have a child P? Yes, it does. Next character, L, we have a child L. Next character, E, this is the last character, so we do have an E over here, right? And last thing that we have to confirm is, okay, this is the last character, Does is it marked such that this is the end of the word? Is it marked as if it was the end of the word? It's blue, right? That's what we're doing to indicate that it's the end of the word, so it is, right? So clearly we do have Apple. We search for Apple, what do we do? We return true because Apple does exist in the try. So next, let's run search again, and this time, let's check if a word app exists inside of our try. App, right? Not Apple. So obviously, we know that starting from the root again, we do have an, a lowercase a, just like we checked. We do have a lowercase p after that, and we do have a second lowercase p. So since we do have all three of these characters, right, a, p, p, shouldn't this function return true? No, we're not returning true. And the reason is this node is the last character of the word, right, p, and it's not marked blue, meaning it's not marked as a word, right? Remember, we only inserted apple into our try, right, into our tree, and we, and we marked this as the end of the word. We never inserted apple app into the tree so this is not marked as the end of the word so we return false for saying that uh app does not exist in our tree app is not a word yet next let's run another function on our tree or try we're going to check does a word start with app how can we check if a word starts with app? Well, we're basically running the exact same thing what we've done, right? We're starting at the root. We're going to check character by character. So this is pretty, like all three of these functions are pretty similar, right? We're checking character by character for all of them. Start at A, A exists, check P, P exists, check another P, P does exist. So since we found all of the characters, right, we're basically guaranteed that either this is a word itself, which clearly it's not, right, we never inserted app, or we're guaranteed that there is some word below that has been marked, right, because if we inserted these characters, we only did that because we were inserting a word, so there's guaranteed to be at least something that is marked blue down here, right, so, so once we found this character, the second P, which is all the characters in here, then we can say true, right? There definitely exists a word that starts with app, right? And so this starts with function is the main reason we're even implementing a try in the first place. Because if we want to insert words and search for words exists, right? To check if a word exists, we could just use a hash map for that, right? Because hash maps can, or hash sets can do both of those things in O of one time, right? But this is really the problem starts with it allows us to check prefixes right so now let's say we were inserting another word let's say we're inserting the word ape right a p e how are we going to do that right we're inserting another word what does that mean are we going to say a p e and then just create a separate node for each of these as children right and just connect them such as that right this is a child of a this is the child of P. Are we going to do that? No, because we could reuse it, right? Why would we have duplicate A's in the first position when we already have an A over here? So if we are inserting this word ape, we're going to leverage this A that we already created. Great. And then we're, we're adding the second character, P. We're going to leverage this P that we already created. And so we've inserted the first two characters. What about the last character, the E? Do we have an E over here? No, right? There's no E in the third position. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna create another child node, right? Now we create an E and last but not least, we mark that this is the end of a word. So you can see that a try actually has the potential to be pretty efficient because we are reusing a lot of nodes, right? We're not necessarily creating a separate node for every single word.
Now, let me just show you one last thing before we jump into the code. So we're gonna do one last function. We wanna check, does any word start with B? And I'm just illustrating why we're even implementing a try in the first place. It's because the starts with function is very efficient compared to other data structures. So for example, let's say we had a list a list of words, a list of strings, and let's say the size of that list was equal to a million, right? How long would it take for us to check if any word starts with B? Worst case, we would have to check every single word in the list and check if it starts with B. And what if there was zero words that started with B? Then every time we would have to go through that entire list of a million words. But with a try like we've implemented right now, it's very efficient. Here you can see we implement, we have two words, right? We have one word here and we have a second word here. And it's possible we could have a million other words, right? Like clearly there's probably a lot of words that start with the character A and maybe so on. But when we run this function starts with B, all we're checking is we're starting at the root. We're checking, do we have any children with the character B, right? We check this first layer. How large is that first layer going to be? Well, we know that there's 26 lowercase letters, right? So worst case, it would be lowercase 26. And that's pretty efficient, right? So when we check, we check, hey, there's a lowercase a, but there's no lowercase b. So for this starts with function, we can return false. And that was done very efficiently, right? Uh, 26 is basically big O of one. So this is a super efficient way to to check prefixes, right? And that's why they call this a prefix tree. Prefixes can be checked very efficiently. So now let's actually jump into the code. All three of the functions, insert, search, and starts with are pretty similar functions. So the, even though we're gonna write a lot of code, it's gonna be mostly similar. So let's jump into that. So our job is to implement a try, but we can't really do that without implementing a try node. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a try node. And all we're gonna do is just create the constructor. So in Python, that's what I'm doing. And net is basically the constructor. And I'm just gonna have a couple of uh, member variables for this. So we are gonna have children of a try node, right? It could have children. It could have 26 children, but instead of doing an array, I'm just gonna do a hash map because that's easier. And remember, we can also mark every single node as if it was the end of a word. I'm gonna say end of word is gonna be a variable. Initially, it's gonna be false but we could set it to true if the character was the end of a word. Notice how we're not actually storing the character itself in the try node. That's going to be implicit from the hash map, from this hash map. So if we were adding a, let's say a character A, a lowercase character A, we would say to children, we would say children uh, for character A is the key. And we're going to create a new try node for that character a right so that's how we're going to be doing it that's how we're going to be inserting a node so that's our entire try node class now let's actually get into the try class so the first thing we're going to do is initialize this so let's get rid of this comment and for initializing this all we're really going to need is a root node and we can get the rest of the nodes from that root so we're going to create a root try node and that's it, that's all we're gonna do for the constructor. And once the try node is created, we basically have an empty tree. Even though we have a root, it's empty because it does, ha it does not have any children. So we technically have not inserted any words yet. But now let's implement the insert word method. This method, for this method, we are gonna have to iterate through every single character in the word. So we're gonna initialize our self current is gonna be set to the root. So we're gonna initially start at the root, right? And then we're gonna go character by character in the word. And for every single character, we're just gonna check two things. Does the word, all, does this character already exist? If it doesn't already exist, so if this character is not in the current nodes dot children hash map, right? So if the current, if this character is not in our hash map yet, that means it hasn't been inserted yet. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna create a try node for this character. So cur dot children, and the key value we're gonna use is the character, and then we're gonna create a new try node. 
So this is how we are going to be inserting characters to children. We're going to use the character as a key value, and then we're going to create a empty try node. And we're only doing that if the character doesn't already exist. If it does already exist, then we can skip that step and just say that current is going to be set to that child, right? So if that character already existed, then we can just update cur and move to that character and then continue our for loop, right? So we're going to do this for every character in the word. And then by the end of this loop, whether we have to create every node or the nodes already exist for us for this word, right? Let's say it was Apple or something, the characters already exist, or we just created them. Now, current is set to the last character of the word. So what are we going to do to current? Well, we're going to mark it as the end of a word. So we're going to set end of word equal to true now, and then we don't really have to return anything. So that was pretty simple, right? Not a lot of complex code. We did have to go through every character and we either created nodes or just iterated through those nodes. And every and the remaining two functions, search and starts with, are actually going to be very similar to this insert function. So now let's get started on search. So we want to search to determine if a word exists or not. So just like the previous function, we're going to start at the root node. So self dot root, and we're going to go character by character in the word. And we're going to check if this character exists in our tree, if it does not. So if C not in current dot children, if this character does not exist, then what do we have to do? We return false, meaning the word just, just simply does not exist. If it does, then we can move ourselves to that child node. So we can update cur and set it to the child node of that character. And then we're going to basically keep doing this for every character in the word. If the word doesn't exist, we'll return false. If the word does exist, that means the entire loop will execute and then we'll be so then cur will be the last character of the word and we and we know that it is a word if cur has the end of word variable set to true so this is the variable we're going to be returning if this is set to true that means this is a word and will return true if it's set to false that means it's not a word and our function is ultimately going to return false and now last but not least, let's get started with the starts with function. And this function is actually going to be the exact same as the search function, except we're not going to have to uh, determine if it's the end of a word or not, right? We, we're not checking if it is a word, we're, right? We, we are just given a prefix and we just want to know if there's any word that starts with this prefix. So once again, for the third time, we're going to be starting at the root. And we're going to go character by character in the prefix this time, right? We're not given a word this time. And if this character is not in our tree, so if it's not in the children right now, then we will return false, meaning the prefix does not exist. Therefore, no words start with this prefix. Otherwise, we will uh, shift our current pointer to that child pointer of this character and continue on. And at the end, if we do reach cur, then we can immediately return true because we know that there's at least one word that starts with this prefix. We don't have to determine that the prefix itself is a word. So that is the entire code. I can zoom out so you can see the entire thing. And we just have one small typo over here. This is children. And so other than that, this is the entire code. So today you just learned a brand new data structure and I hope that this was helpful for you. So this data structure can be pretty useful. It's a rare data structure to see on leak code problems, but I hope that you did learn something new today. And if this was helpful, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.